Let me sum it up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if the group's interested, but I'd like to know how to create a Zoom link. Um, how do you do that? So do you have the um, Zoom app on your computer? Um, the little blue icon? Um, would it? Oh, yeah, I do. I do have that. For, so Zoom is silly and doesn't let me Zoom or screen share that screen. Um, so let me see if I can. Um, get a image or something to show you okay. um, with what it looks like um, home screen. So you should see something um, Can we open ours or is that gonna mess up? No, you can open up yours. Um, so you should see something like this on an app, on that app. Do you see something like that? When you click that blue square and the white um, camera, but it's oh, kind camera. of like a hot water bottle. Yes, I do have that, Lynn. Okay, so this is telling you four choices here. You can uh, just join a new meeting spontaneously, okay. uh, which is the orange guy. The blue is you could, instead of clicking that blue link that I send out that says, you know, click here to attend or, you know, that Zoom link. Mm -hmm. uh, if you click join, you're going to get a pop-up screen asking for the meeting ID number. You can paste in that meeting ID number, and if there's a password, um, you can put the pat. It will ask you for the password, and you can join that way instead of clicking the link. Um, and then schedule is what you would want to do. So if you click that schedule button, um, you're going to get a pop-up screen. And it's going to ask you to name your Zoom meeting um, okay. and pick out the date and the time. Uh, you don't, if you, you know, say, you know, you want to meet Monday night at seven, but you accidentally do six or five or Tuesday, it, it's still going to work. It's not going to say, you know, oh, you, you missed it by an hour. It's done. So you don't have to be perfect with the times. Okay. So, and then you can scroll down and there's different features. Like you can mute people when they enter, you can automatically record the meeting. There are different check marks you can go through. Okay. Whether you want weight room or not. Yeah. So a weight room would be, you know, um, you as the host would have to allow them in. Okay. Uh, but if say, you know, you wanted somebody else to host the meeting, they couldn't enter because um, there's a waiting room. So um, that's the pros and cons of waiting rooms. What, what do we do here if, um, you know, we're, most of the stuff I'm doing is church business and we're, I guess, going off in the church uh, uh, agreement. If I just want to do it with my own kids or mm -hmm. my sister-in-law or something like that, how do I, what do I do? Sign up for a separate account? And do you, do you have that app? Do you see a screen with those four buttons, Dan, when you click that blue logo? Okay, the blue, what comes up is on the right side, it says Zoom. Hey there, I'm both the Zoom virtual assistant. To operate best when asked, short direct questions how can i help getting zoom sorry with zoom how do i join a meeting i can't join a meeting camera's not working can you hear me we can hear you and your camera's working because we see you too okay then so you don't that, that's over the right it's about a six inch by 
eight inch square kind of then in front it says click open zoom meetings on the dialogue the usual one if you don't see a dialogue and then the launch meeting thing um so you don't see anything that looks like an app like any of this stuff but i get how can i help or um I wish I could, I wish they allowed me to show you. It shows at the top, the blue with a box, kind of sideways. Double box. click that blue guy with a box. And it might be funky because um, you're, you're in a Zoom meeting, so it's confused, but you should see a screen like this. It might look like this though. Okay. Because when you click what along came? the top, there are different things. So if you have it under meetings, it's going to show you this stuff. Yeah. Now I guess I don't know if I'm seeing you. I'm seeing the back I'm to meetings sure, join. So that's confusing. Is that yours? Yeah. Okay. Let's ignore me for a minute and keep going. No, we want to. We want. We want you to understand and figure it out. You can also do it on the website if that's easier. Um, you can go to zoom.us um, and um, log into an account and go in that right route, which is an option. What account do you log into then? It's your personal account. So we can go through this too. Like we don't, does Virginia and I, do we have personal accounts? You can create one. If you don't have one already, you can create one. Okay. So if you go to zoom.us, okay. um, you go to my account, I already am logged in, um, but uh, you, if you go to that, if you have that Zoom app, um, on your computer, you'll see your initials at the top corner here. Sorry, I'm not explaining this well. So if you go, if you click that guy right there, mm -hmm. um, you won't see it because let me do a screenshot. Hold on. If you click that little green thing that says um, LG, yours would probably be your initials uh, because my initials are LG. Okay. Um, but you would see something like this and this will be your account if you have one. Um, and I'm a licensed or paid account. So I have extra features like going over an hour. Um, but if you go to settings, it will send you to the website. So if you want to use your current account that you ha already have set up, you can do that. You have the option of logging in through Google or Facebook. So some people use their Google or Gmail or Google or Facebook accounts to create their Zoom account. Um, What's the cost? Uh, it's free for anyone with Zoom. Uh, if you want it to, if you want a paid one to go over an hour, that's really the, the benefit for people is to go over an hour. Um, I'd have to Google the pricing. But if you're doing one on one, as Chuck said, you know, he did a one on one with his family members and uh, went over an hour. So if you have only are talking to one person over Zoom, uh, that hour thing, that 40 minutes doesn't cut you off the way. We did about two and a half hours. Wow. Yeah. So, so it's only groups of three or more where you have issues. Um, so that there is sort of a way around that. Uh, Bob Young and I are in a book group and we talk more than 40 minutes. So we set up back to back um, schedules 
And when one runs out, we just jump to the other one. You can also uh, click the old meeting again. So you don't have to have two, two numbers. You can just go back into the first one. Um, so you don't have to keep track of multiple numbers. Takes so, about 40 minutes to say hello. So I think I need more than that. That's why you're not in the book group. <laughs> oh. <laughs> crush. I know. We'll work on it. Um, okay. But but yeah, there there are some companies and things that do races. Who can be the first one back in the meeting, you know, after that, once the meeting gets shut off. Mm. Um, if you were on the journey class on Sunday, we accidentally got kicked off and had that happen to us. So. We did. So it was distressing. <laughs> <laughs> I think we lost a few people. That's okay. Uh, One more question, Lynn. Um, <laughs> if you click on our create a personal account with zoom.us, yeah. don't like you said, go into my account. If you don't have an account set up, how do you set up the account? Uh, it, it will ask you, do you wanna hook it up with your Gmail account if you have one, or if you wanna set it up with your Facebook account? Okay. So you have options to do either of those. I tend, I, I don't like those like automatic sign-ins. It's easier, but um, it gives more power to Google and Facebook. So I tend to do the third option, which is type in your email and create a stronger password. Okay. Um, which is a third option you can do. Okay. But it's just one more password to keep track. Yeah. Okay. And then you'll log into that on your Zoom app on your computer. And as I showed you before, once you are, ha are logged in and have that stuff, if you click this meetings tab okay. um, right here, yeah, you'll get to this screen and it's going to show you all the upcoming meetings in your account. Okay. And then you can hit this start button so you don't have to click the link yourself. Okay. Um, so it's a little bit easier if you'll have them all there. If if you're invited to a Z meeting, it's not going to show up uh, like <coughs> you won't see the journey class in here. Um, <coughs> but um, Lynn, on, on that account, um, all right, I'm not, I don't have a, my separate account set up. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed that on the different meetings, my name is different. Like it's Nancy Tuttle on this. It, it's Nancy J. Tuttle on, on something else. And it's Nancy J. on the third thing on all within the church. So when I would go, if I would set up my own account, would, it, would I have to somehow make those all fit into that or would it do it automatically? It will do. It will bring in your username and password automatically. But I think um, it's different on two different on the different it's accounts. It's two different um, devices <laughs> that you're on, or is it the same uh, device and it switches between the two? Well, no, it's the same device. However, I used to be on my cell phone. Now I'm on my laptop top completely. But today is the you know, first time with you that I signed in that I had to actually register. And if it had filled out the form, I just hit register. Usually, because the meeting's already started, I can just go right to your thing. In the same way with choir, I just wait and go right to that. But my name on the screen, I know is different. And I know at one point for Bible study, I had to re-sign in because it didn't know me. And so I just guessed at what my password was and everything. And I don't even know, you know, that they're both the same. I guess that would come out if I set up my own account. Um, I could still be using it just the other way instead of going in and getting into the Zoom meeting for my account. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, well, and I, I I switch between two Zoom accounts. I have my own Lynn George account, but then I I um, create meetings for the General Westminster account. So we have a General Westminster account for all the Bible studies and you know church stuff. Um, so. I will usually be logged on the website with the Westminster account. So there have been a few times when I have Zoom open on the web. And if I click the link and Zoom's open on the web in the Westminster account, and I click the link to join a meeting, 
it will bring in my West, even though I'm logged into my Lynn George account on the app, it will bring in the Westminster name um, for that reason. So, so you will appear twice. I, no, it will say oh. instead of Lynn George, it will say Westminster Presbyterian oh, Church. Okay. Because that's the name of the general Westminster Zoom account. Um, but then I just changed my name and it's fine. Lynn, yesterday when you sent out your reminder, I used that this morning, as I frequently do, to join mm -hmm. this meeting. Usually when I do that, it asks me to register my first and last name and my email account. Today, it just took me straight to your meeting. Hmm. Did Are you, you set it up something the... differently today or no? is Zoom just being nuts? Was the meeting no. already on when you, when you clogged, when you? No, I was not. Oh, neither was um, it. You're, you're on an iPad though, right? And that's yes. different. Are you logged in to a Zoom account on? I have a Zoom account, but I just, I just used the link that you sent out yesterday you said, if you want to join this meeting, click here. And that's what I did. I did not open my Zoom app on this machine. I have it, but I didn't open it. Hmm. Yeah, it, it probably opened the app for you automatically when you click the link. Okay. But it didn't ask me to register like I normally do and then get a response email from you. It just took me straight to the meeting. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think because it, you're on the app version, it might do that. I it's done have... that once or twice before on my desktop downstairs where I, where I normally am. Hmm. But some days it takes me to the, right to the meeting and some days it asks me to register and then I get a real quick email from you with saying, yes, you're registered, click this link and then I get into the meeting. But there, there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason yeah. as to why how you right. how we approach the meeting. It just whatever they want me to do that day <laughs> right i don't have an answer for that yeah yeah karen i didn't get a reminder you didn't get an email from me today you've been no, getting yesterday. them though right yesterday yesterday no you i haven't you, been getting any reminders from you for a while did you get trying it to tell again? you something karen i think so <laughs> <laughs> Because I know you did. Did, you, did it ever start again? Because I thought we tried and got it resolved, so you were getting it. No, I just no, we never, um, we never, you never got it. Okay. Did you get her recaps uh, in a day or so, either on Thursdays or Mondays. You know what? I haven't. No, that's weird. She's really telling you something now. Here at first it was me, now it's you. Aww, aww, aww. I think Karen, you unsubscribed. All right, let me realm emails. If you go to the realm app on your phone, there's probably an email setting. Here, let's check it out. I don't know if you guys are active realm users or not. I, I'm I, I'm realm realmless. I'm not, but we are active <laughs> zoomers. I'm not an active user, but I have an account. Mm -hmm. yes. but, but my question is, because we are active Zoomers, does that mean we have Zoom accounts or not? No. Um, it's possible, um, but not necessarily. Um, okay. You might have downloaded the app and just never logged in. We'll see if this works. My internet's been funky today. I, I lost internet twice this morning. I was like, I hope that <laughs> I make it through this. Uh, Do I access Realm on my phone through um, Google? Um, there's a app, um, a Realm app. Um, oh, you know what? I don't think I have that. What the, oh I okay. Can we mature desktopers get on it? Yes, there's a desktop app. Um, but I think I'm appless. Um, <laughs> do I go to the app store and download? Yep, you should be able to. 
Okay, that's being silly. Let's see if I can get on their website. Let's see. Okay. So you should, if you log into Zoom or Realm is our church online database uh, right. system. So right. it's an online church directory. Um, so if you log into the website, which is on realm.org slash West or Westminster PC. The online dot org on realm westminster pc dot dot pc um and if you there's a lot of nice things they have there's ways for us to communicate um within groups so there's a tech time group with all of you there so if you wanted to go to i'm in a lot of groups so um whoa you're popular <laughs> um but if I go down to tech time, um, you'll see all the participants in the group. So if you go, I want to talk to Connie, you can go click on her profile and get her contact information, you know, um, or, you know, you know, that Bob Bell, you know, you want to, you want to catch up with him. There's his, um, you know, contact information. Uh, or if you want to send an email to the group, you can um, and be like, hey, I found this really cool app or whatever. You can you can post information there that way. Um, so that's a nice feature. You can also see your giving. Uh, you can register for the in-person services when that comes. Um, through the events, but what Karen, we need to check out. If you go to your, uh, it should say Karen up here when you log in. Um, and if you go to notification settings. And I missed the, how to get, to, how to get to realm. Um, if you go to on realm in the browser on realm.org slash Westminster PC. Right there. That right, will get you to your home page right, and you'll have to log in. Um, but if you go to your, are you seeing that? I'm trying. I'll send this later too, but. If you go down to notifications, there should be um, settings for what you want to receive notifications for. You know what strikes me here is you're taking care of it now, Lynn, but this is the sort of thing, there's a lot of material here and I'm the type that I haven't used it and it's not good. Mm. Something that you can look at is maybe a program to help us get more comfortable with this. I don't know. I know you're trying to do that now, but I'm just saying yeah. that. We could do a whole class on Realm. I think I, I would, I think that would be useful. Yes. Was like not the ministers group that you're a part of probably. So you can talk to other Stephen ministers. Yeah, or there's this part of a uh, someone was wanting me to hook up to to call a couple of people who yeah who could be called, and I'm trying to get back on them before I call them so that they're comfortable with me. Mm -hmm. um, so I could do that with Realm, maybe. Yep, yep. But there's an, there's an awful lot of people that aren't on it, though, right? What? There's an awful lot of people that who are members but aren't on Realm. They might not be using their account, but all the members are in here. Um, church staff puts everybody in here. It's how we access all your contact information. Um, so but I can't access it unless the person is given permission, right? Yeah, there are different settings. Okay, because everybody I've looked up 
there hasn't been a name, their name hasn't been in there even. So I figured it's just not, a, just doesn't show up for me. Is that right? Some people, you can set your privacy settings so that you are hidden. Your contact information is hidden to everybody but the staff. So yeah. some, some people prefer to do that um, for various reasons. I always encourage people to make their contact information public so that um, people can see it because I think it's a real nice benefit because the nice thing is you can update that yourself. You don't have to contact Barb Drain or I and say, hey, I, I moved or my email changed. You can go in and change it yourself. And then it updates for everybody. So the paper directories, you know, they get outdated before they're even printed. Um, oh, but I'm, I'm, I, I'm in there, but unfortunately the other Nancy isn't. And so when her mom died, I got the, all the cards and stuff, I guess, you know, notes mm -hmm. and balances. Mm -hmm. um, and I yeah. just logged into Realm on my phone. Yeah. And <clears throat> the screen that came up says, Amazing Race, Saturday, October 24th, 2020, which was canceled, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can't go anywhere. If I click the back button, it gives me the same thing. The news feed probably hasn't been updated. I can't get anywhere. There's a information below to enter, but which I did at the time, but then they canceled it. But I, there's a next button, but I can't go anywhere. Um, let's see if it's going to let me screen share my phone. We'll see if it behaves itself. It does not appear to be. Oh, there it is. Spinning wheel of doom. Maybe. <laughs> Excuse me. Mm, maybe. 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 One of these days. I swear, whenever it's raining, the internet does not behave itself. Nope, it's not able to connect. Okay. Is that um, related to the rain? Is it neurological? Maybe the computer, the computer has emotions. Oh. <laughs> um, but um, I, I know the news feed sometimes hasn't been updated for the whole public. If you're not, if the groups aren't actively using it, um, and you're just in the general Westminster, we tend not to put things on the news feed just because it then emails all the congregation an update if they don't have an account. So we don't want to <laughs> mass, um, you know, send all these email subscriptions to everybody. And then you have people that unsubscribe and then can't get things like my tech time recaps. Um, those are great, yeah. by the way. You do a very good job with those. Thank you. Can I uh, bring up another subject that's important to me? Of course. Um, the I was on last night a men's group studying Revelation, which is pretty good stuff. It's pretty heavy. And um, I'm on other Zoom as well. And one of the things that came up yesterday was the fact that well, we can't wait to get back into the church. And so we're off in the Zoom thing and this sort of thing and, mm -hmm. um, um, and so on. And I appreciate that. But um, I guess at this point, I, I move from, um, move a step further saying, are we gonna go to a hybrid model? That came up, the cost involved in that but I guess I, I moved from being just a participant to an, an advocate, so to speak, because if I if you don't have a hybrid model, then I can't be involved in things. Mm -hmm. um, so if you got to spend a few bucks to do it, um, 
I want somebody to realize how important it is because all these meetings I've been to this week, I would not have been to right. for disability. Right, right. We are definitely, we have to do everything hybrid in the future. There's no question. There's, it's everything has to have a hybrid option. Um, we just got a proposal this week. There's Zoom does something called Zoom Rooms, which is basically a conference room um, for Zoom. So um, there's this special TV that has a built-in camera and microphone um, and it launches the Zoom meeting. So you would get two TVs. You would get one that has... Um, PowerPoint. So if like a Tuesday morning men's presentation had a PowerPoint presentation, I guess they're the Tuesday fellowship group, I apologize. Um, so they're showing the PowerPoint on one thing. And then there's a second TV with the Zoom gallery of all the people watching at home. But they can see everybody sitting in Spellman Jr. or wherever. Um, and can hear and see them all. Um, and then they can see the screen share of the PowerPoint presentation that's on one TV in Spellman. Um, so we just got a proposal of we're planning on installing two of those nice high tech devices, yeah. one in Spellman Jr. and one in the choir room. Um, we did in the fall when we had um, people, small groups meeting in the church. We had, we got a, a device called an owl. It's this 360 microphone and camera that sits in the middle of the room and spins around to find whoever's speaking in the room. And it hooks up to a computer and you can screen share it on a computer. Um, so we have one of those, uh, which- How well did that work? What? How well did that work? It was fine. It wasn't great um, quality. Um, and it picked up male voices better than it did female voices. Um, so but it worked. It, it, was, <laughs> it was not nearly as nice as the you know professional conference room table, it, but it's cheaper. It's only a thousand bucks versus five thousand dollars for us, you know, one of those TVs. Um, so we have one of those. So we have currently, and we have a smart TV in the site, the Cove and room 413 right now. So th those three rooms, you can put the owl on and it's not nearly as nice as at the conference room setup, but it works um, for our purposes at the moment. So, the plan is to take the current Spellman Junior equipment and move it to one of the other classrooms. Um, and we have an extra TV. So we're planning on putting that up in the library. Um, so th that way all the rooms have um, a TV device in them. Um, but I know uh, Jerry and Don took a proposal to session saying, we think this is going to be $16,000. And the proposal we got to do all of those things was 20,000. So they're like, oh no, it's more money than we anticipated. So we'll see if things get cut out or if you know they bite the bullet and spend more than they wanted to. Um, we'll see what happens, but. Um, and to be honest with you, um, the proposal didn't have all the features I thought it should have to make it look a little nicer. Um, and that would be more. So, <laughs> like, to, to sum it up, do you then think that the importance of doing this, the word message has gotten through to the people who count? Yes. Everybody, the entire staff knows that in the future, everything will need to be hybrid. It's the question of how much money do we want to spend on on installing stuff, and you know how good a quality does it need to be, you know. Like you know, v Virginia and I were talking about celebrate recovery, how people have moved away and still want to be in their small group, 
So um, it's every group is facing that issue. You've got people on sessions and things that will be out of town, but would still want to participate. I mean, then you have session members that live 45 minutes or an hour away. <laughs> I brought up before you got people driving at night that shouldn't be driving at night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think some meetings, like instead of meeting once a month in person, we're going to meet four times out of the year and the rest will be on Zoom or half and half or hybrid. But um, I think I'll be curious should, to see what the future holds. I think we should cut out a meeting or two a year and add a party or two a year. Yes. <laughs> it sounds okay. That sounds like a plan. It does. We have the party at your house, Dan. I like the emoji, Bob. I'm not able to uh, make that decision. We have to talk to management. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask a, <clears throat> a question. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I hope I have the vocabulary. I'm looking at you folks on my desktop. I uh, have a laptop and I need the laptop to do our Westminster service mm -hmm. in our auditorium. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the uh, anything I can get on my laptop if I have a HDMI cable, mm -hmm. I can put that on my living room big TV, mm -hmm. or I can take the laptop downstairs and they have an, a, a cable that connects it to a camera that puts it on a screen for anybody in the auditorium. My, or, so every, th every Sunday I, project our Westminster service in the afternoon that, uh, to whoever comes. Now, would the same uh, principle work for uh, now the, uh, tr the tray? I have a tray on this laptop and so one of the men, one of the residents gave me a CD that he wanted to project for another group. He's a teacher and, and um, if I can get his CD on my screen, can I assume that also would project in the auditorium, wherever, if I had the right HD, if I had the HDMI cable? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you have both plugged in at the same time, you can do that. Uh -huh. Okay. If you want to practice sometime, let let me know. I'm happy to. Okay. Yeah. Be on standby. <laughs> okay. you're, pretty, you're pretty impressive, Rev Pastor. Oh. You spoke that well. You did. I, I am really impressed. I I am too. Oh no. Bob, what does HDMI stand for? I'm I'm not sure. High definition. I don't know. Multimedia. Multi maybe yeah. Multimedia. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Interface. Sounds good. High definition multimedia interface. Yep, you guys nailed there you it. Go. Uh huh. Yeah. My uh, TVs. Uh, I used when Louise was. Um, um, with me, I could take something, anything in the um, laptop with the special cable and there's a plug in in my TV from the laptop to the back room TV or the, wherever. Where, I think maybe all TVs have a plug in, do they for that? Most new TVs, yeah. Oh, if your TV's over 20 years old, it probably won't. Okay. Probably right. less than that. So my Sylvania halo light <laughs> wouldn't work. <laughs> nice try, Bob. <laughs> Lynn doesn't know what that is. 
the whole Virginia month. doesn't know what that is. <laughs> You're probably right. Your parents Virginia probably had doesn't one. know what that is. <laughs> Do some laptops not have a tray that comes out to take a DVD? Mm -hmm. Yes. All the new ones don't. do not. Do not. Yeah, you need to get a external D, uh, one. So oh. you get you get one like this that you plug into your computer. Interesting. Is that expensive? Twenty bucks. Yeah. Uh huh. Or cheap. Okay. Interesting. But if you have it on your laptop, you don't need one. Uh, right. And I not all laptops come with computer, them either. You probably won't have it anymore. Uh, what's that? If you update your computer, get a new one, you'd uh, have to probably buy one. Right. Uh, that means that people haven't been using them very much. Is that it? Mm -hmm. oh. Everybody's streaming things. They're no longer watching DVDs anymore. Oh. Mm -hmm. Just by the time we catch up with things, Pastor, mm -hmm. they go away. You know? <laughs> so. mm. mm -hmm. I have a question, Lynn. Um, um, I have to watch a movie for a program I need. How do you watch a movie on your laptop? Um, is it over the internet or is it a DVD you have to watch? It's over the internet. So okay. he gave me different, um, I pick one movie out of like four different ones. Okay. <clears throat> Are they on YouTube or are they on? I don't know. How do you know if they're on YouTube? Uh, the blue URL <coughs> the link would say YouTube in it or? He didn't give me a link. That was the thing. He just gave me um, the title of the movie. Oh, the title of the films that he wants you to watch? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so what you'd have to do is Google that title of the, the movie. Okay. So you can, how do I watch, you know, um, Parasite or whatever film? How do I watch Gone with the Wind or, you know, Citizen Kane, whatever the film is. And it will show you the different ways you can watch it. Um, so some of it might be, you know, Amazon or um, Netflix or, you know, Hulu or Disney. Um, in some cases, uh, you'd need you know those plat those streaming platforms to watch them on. Uh, so you couldn't watch the, it on Netflix if you don't have Netflix. Um, okay. But you and you pro you might have to spend rent pay a rental fee if you watch it on um, Amazon or Redbox or any of that type okay. stuff. Um, you could also look at the library and get the DVD at the library too, okay. um, which would be free versus, you know, renting. Yeah. Um, but most, most things are online on, in some capacity. Some of the older films are harder to find, but. Okay, so just start by Googling it and say, how do I watch and then put the title in. Yeah. Okay. Do you have Comcast or Verizon? We have um, Comcast. You could possibly go into their on-demand library and find it there, depending upon what it might be. Okay. And there might be a rental fee for that too, which would show up on your monthly bill. Right. Okay. Thank you. I know you. Bev and I have watched a few movies that way. Whether they'll have what you're looking for, I can't tell you, but you'll have, you can okay. check that also. Okay. To, to pick up on something I said before, I've got a HP Pavilion 21. You know what that is? Yep. Um, I pick it up and show it to you, except I can't pick it up and show it to you. You know, it's here. Um, but uh, back to the whether I can use. I'm trying to think. I've got I've got an external drive on it that can be used. I can use a um, a disc in that, right? 
-hmm. Would that satisfy me for anything I need that for? I mean, like if, I mean, can you do a movie that way? Uh -huh. And do you have an external hard drive or an external CD drive? I don't know. I don't know if I can get to it because I'm, I'm not. Is it, a, is it something that looks like this? I, I, I just, I got to find it. I, I, I'm not doing real great. Today. So let me just see if I can find it. Something that looks like this? Yeah. We've talked or about the external hard drive looks... several times. Or is it something that looks like this? <laughs> yeah. I don't know, it disappeared. <laughs> this and this are external hard drives. Yeah. So. And what's the big one? In your left hand, uh, it's a um, G drive. It's I think four or six terabytes. I'll keep you busy for a couple of days. <laughs> yeah, with all the videos I'm editing. Um, yeah. Lynn, I'm gonna have to sign off, but yeah, thank you very much. Of course, it's good to see you. Good to yeah. see you. Good to bye, see you. Bye, Virginia. Bye. Bye, Virginia. Bye, Virginia. Good luck yeah. finding your movie. Thank you. Yeah. Have fun. Thanks. <laughs> always fun. Virginia, call, call sometime. I will. I will, Dan. Okay. God bless you. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Is there anything streaming that you can watch without having a platform? If it's, if it's um, you know, a streaming thing, you need something, right? If it's on YouTube, it, it might be free, depending on what it is. Um, do, you have, do you have to have a YouTube account for that? No. Oh, okay. No. But right. Netflix, Hulu, Google, yes. you could watch Amazon Prime stuff, but you'd have to pay. Yeah, see, I don't have any, I don't have cable. I don't have anything um, other than my internet access. Mm -hmm. So I guess I need to make a decision and buy something if I want to watch some of these movies and things. Yeah. Although, although the chosen is dot TV. What, what is, what is dot TV? It's I've only just heard about the chosen. I hear it's an app you can download and it's on. Okay. App. Yeah. And actually I didn't have to download the app if I just clicked on the chosen dot TV and then mm -hmm. it did take me to their website. I guess it must okay. just be their website somehow that it's working, mm -hmm. but yeah, to be able to watch everything, I think you do the app. Mm -hmm. Well, and you can do what most millennials do, which is um, do the free trials of things and then shut it off before the trial ends and then switch to another platform and watch those shows and then shut it off and switch to another one. Um, so that's what we taught you, huh? <laughs> I don't do that, but there are people that do that. Or you you share you share things like you know, um, I'm going to ha buy a Netflix account and share it with my family members, and my parents are going to get Amazon Prime and share the username with me and my brother, and my brother's going to get you know, um, whatever Hulu or whatever he wants to get, and then share the stuff with us. So that's that's workarounds millennial most millennials tend to do is share passwords and things let, let me say something this a uh, vertical screen arena i just push something over here pull that out and out comes this oh so you have a cd drive of some yeah, kind right yeah is that part of the computer yeah it is okay i didn't learned about it about time i was going to trade it in yeah, it, it's, yeah, it's got some software on it. But I've got a backup too somewhere here. That's great. You're all set. More or less. So, but you can get a CD drive to, to connect with a USB cable yeah. to your- Yes. 
this okay. thing. It looks like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, because my computer's like six or seven years old, so I'm sure my, my desktop, so I probably should get a new one, but it has a CD drive and I lots of my mm -hmm. stuff is on photos and everything are on CDs. Mm -hmm. yep. yep, yep, you can still buy those. You can still buy floppy disk drives and plug them in too. Oh, I've got really? one of those, yeah. <laughs> um, but not so. the, um, oh, what was his, I had, a, I had another drive, I forget what it was called, that doesn't nothing talks to that now. Um, not a zip drive. Uh, um, I don't know what it was, but I do have a question from last week when you were doing the um, emergency contact stuff. Mm -hmm. Now I didn't. I haven't looked at the link that you put to show how to do it on an Android phone. But my old Android track phone, I was scared to set up an emergency contact. I didn't know what that was going to do. So just before, just before I transferred over my new phone, I tried it. And I put in my daughter's number and whatever, and then I hit emergency, and the whole phone went, and I couldn't shut it off. <laughs> and I guess it did call her. I'm not even sure it called her because I was doing it at her house, and she's, we're laughing so hard we can't figure what you know. It's the neighbors <laughs> have heard it. Is that what's supposed to happen? Is it supposed to set off a big alarm too? I don't. I I don't have an Android, so I can't say. I don't know. Yeah, I was hoping Stephen would be here to. Or anybody else have an Android and have tried that? Because I'm afraid to set up my new phone. Well, and Stephen said that it's not nearly as easy on the Android as it is on the iPhone. Well, and I'm thinking that my old one also was going to call 911. Hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I would think you might want it, somebody to find your phone and, and try to call your emergency contact before you want them to call 911. Mm-hmm. Um, the um, cup and a string. The, when the iPhone sends the emergency SOS, it will call 911 and then text all your all your emergency contacts. Oh, okay. Well, that's what I was afraid my other one was doing when it was making all this big noise, but I don't know. We finally I tried to just turn the phone off and even it still I wanted to go with the phone turned off. It was like, what? <laughs> I'm sure 911 has, you know, experienced this before and you talked yeah. to me like, uh, I messed up my phone. Um, there was one time I accidentally called 911 when I worked at Chocolate World because the Chocolate World security was 991 um, and I accidentally hit the wrong numbers. And so I'm on the phone with the police and they're like, uh, well, it can send it. I'm like, no, I just need security at the chocolate road. Please don't call. <laughs> they wouldn't believe me. <laughs> like, hmm. like, no, just get off the phone because I need to call these people. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, any other questions before um, we head out for the day? Um, I don't know if I should deal with it now or not. Um, Go ahead. What is it? I got something here. It's a service agreement. It's from someone that it, uh, Tech SharePoint. And they got all this information on me. I think from 2017. They have a DocuSign here. I think it came from one of those bad people calls. Uh, phishing emails or phishing calls? Yeah. Um, but anyhow, they they complaining because they couldn't get, they're charging me for money and um, for computer soft, computer work and so on. I'm not going to pay it. Um, as far as what to do, should I just go to my credit union and say no? Should I call them and say no? Um, Is it a bill that charged you stuff or did it come They want to charge me by DocuSign, but they say that's expired because they've got information on me. But you've never signed up with them before or anything. I, I, I don't know if it was a situation where I got scammed kind of a few years ago and they got some stuff on me 
Mm-hmm. I, and I know it sounds stupid, but I can't remember. I don't think it's some, I've never benefited from them, put it that way. In other words, I don't want the service. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I want to get out of it gracefully at no cost and um, mm-hmm. is there um, if it's not a bill or anything you should just be able to throw it away oh it, it's a service a service agreement with a bill they've got it's got a bill with it and everything okay so are they is there a number for you to call and cancel? Uh, yeah, yeah, but should I? Should I make contact with them? I don't know. I'd have to read the letter or things. If you want to scan that or you know take a photo of it and send it over and read it and see what it says. I don't know of them. It might be a phishing email or a phishing letter that you know. Yeah is just completely fake. My way has been to not follow up because I, I get into more trouble that way than I get into it by doing exactly. that. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they will contact you again and again if you know it's needed. How about if I call my credit union just to make sure no money goes anywhere? Mm-hmm. And if I have more questions, can I give you a call back afterwards sometime? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, if you could take a picture of that letter or something so I could read it and see what exactly they're saying. Okay. Might be more helpful than trying Can to. I, that, that last thing, I could email. Yeah. I, I, email, I could email it to you. Yeah. Or Patty can text it on her from her iPad or phone. Or I could buy a phone. Uh, never mind. <laughs> That's a lot of money to send one photo. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I have to leave, Lynn. Good to see you, Karen. Thank you. All right, Karen. Bye. 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 You too. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's good to see you. Toodaloo. Bye. Bye. Uh, anything else, Dan? Um, there must be.